everyone, welcome back, welcome to the channel. If you're new, hi, my name is Mar, and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Welcome to Makeup Avenger episode number one. This is my new YouTube series that's gonna be kind of like a visual podcast. Can I even call it that? For Makeup Avenger, I'm going to be choosing a topic, like any topic, can be about something I saw online, something everyone's been talking about, can be me talking about a TV show I watched recently, literally anything. I'm going to be doing my makeup while I talk about it. A different makeup look every single video and a different topic every single video. Since the year just started, I thought I would start the series also by talking about a few of my favorites of 2023. So TV shows, movies, books, music, concerts, musicians, fashion trends, like a lot of stuff a lot. <laughs> I also asked you on social media to submit a few of your favorites so we could discuss about it and yeah so I enjoy talking so it felt right to start this like visual podcast experience. <laughs> for today's episode I went for the cold girl makeup trend. I've been wanting to film a video on this for a while and I don't know why I haven't yet. It's so so cute and I love doing this type of look. But in the future, I'm going to be trying to do more creative and editorial makeup looks as well. I don't want it to be like something like super normy makeup style. Sometimes we'll go a bit crazy. Maybe for one of the episodes, I'll even do like a monster high look in which I paint my entire face a certain color. Why not? You can also submit what type of looks you'd like me to do throughout the series and you can also submit what topics you'd like me to talk about. I have a few ideas in mind but I'd love to hear your suggestions. So yeah, I think that's pretty much what this series is going to be. Uh, make up a banter. I hope you enjoy. In If you want to hear me talk about my favorites of the year or if you just want to see how I achieved this cold girl makeup look, then just keep on watching. All right, so today I think I'm gonna start by talking about some of my favorite TV shows of the year uh, because I, I just love talking about it. I even did a thread on Twitter recently in which I'm going to be sharing my TV shows, like my watch list of 2024, so if you're interested. Um, but yeah, let's start with TV shows. You know, I watch a lot of TV shows. I think it keeps me really entertained, especially when I'm like busy with school and everything. It's sometimes like really cool as a getaway, I guess, like an escape. I don't really know how else to describe it, honestly. But yeah, I watched a lot of them. So sometimes it's really hard for me to even keep track of the ones that I've been watching. So I had to do some research for this video and I went to my TV Time app, not sponsored, which it was because I've been using that app since I was in seventh grade. But I went to my TV Time app and I checked on what shows I watched throughout 2023 and I had no idea. I was about to find out. I spent so much time of my life watching TV. I forgot to wet my beauty blender, BRB. But yeah, I had no idea how much time I spent watching TV. Apparently, according to TV time, I watched 1062 episodes. That is insane. I don't even know how that happened. Honestly, it might have been like because of a few reality TV shows. Here in Portugal, there's a reality TV show that I watch. It has like three or four episodes per day. And then there's like the most important one on the weekends. But sometimes I just said that I watch them so I keep track, but I mostly watch only the ones that air on Sunday. It is really hard for me to pick favorites of anything which is really funny because like why am i even filming a favorites of the year video if i can't pick a favorite but i tried so i went through the list of every tv show i watched in 2023 to try to figure out which ones i wanted to talk about but then i was like you know what i'm really curious to find out which show was the first show that i watched once the year started i didn't even have to check because i remember that so clearly oh my god don't even get me started on that show i was so hyper fixated on it it was 
actually crazy but the first show I watched in 2023 was a Netflix original show called Sex Life. When I watched this show it was literally probably like first or second season of the year. Uh, the show only had one season and you know when you're reading a book and you can't put the book down like you need to know what happens next so you just keep on reading and reading and reading and all of a sudden you I finished your book in like three days that was me with this show I needed to keep on watching like I needed to know what was about to happen and it's not even one of those murder mystery shows there's no like murder there's no one at fault for anything really but it, it was such an addicting show like I had to keep on watching Sex Life is a show about this woman named Billy who was once studying in college, she did psychology I believe um, and yeah, but right now she's a stay-at-home mom she lives with her husband and her two kids her husband's name is Cooper and yeah, she just stays at home, takes care of the kids like gets them to school and everything there is to do but Billy has always had that passion for what she was studying in college. I believe she never finished her degree and she's always like, oh, I wanna go back, I, I really wanted to finish it. And she also really enjoys writing. I can't remember like details cause I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up or say something that's not correct. But if I remember it correctly, she even was like planning on releasing her own book when she was younger and she wrote for like, either a website or a magazine or something I think it was a magazine one day Billy is like at her laptop and she just starts getting flashbacks to when she was younger and she would go out with her best friend to a club they would have so much fun there and as she's writing on her laptop about this it's kind of like diary entries she's also like imagining it right so you as a viewer you get to see the flashbacks and you get to see those scenes of like when she was younger with her best friend like in college and at the club and everything so what had happened was that when billy was younger in one of these nights she met this guy named brad and let's just say they hit it off quite quickly and they eventually started dating and you know billy is not writing or at least as a viewer that's the that's the feeling that i got i don't think she's writing those diary entries with the intention of oh my god i wish i could go back to brad because in fact they haven't talked and even seen each other for a while a few years i would say but you know billy and brad they had that type of relationship that you read about in the book you know that relationship that looks perfect but it's a little bit toxic because it is a TV show after all and we need the drama he has that bad boy vibe that's why I think he's kind of like the guy from the movies he works at the record label so you know he got me there however they broke up and have not seen each other for a while one day Billy's uh, husband Cooper finds her laptop and sees these diary entries so he gets mad and he goes up to her and he's like are you cheating on me or like why are you thinking about this guy who even is he what is his deal like what's going on and Billy well first of all she's really mad because he was going through her stuff because let me tell you Billy is a really strong female lead character like probably one of the strongest most confident characters I've ever seen in a TV show I really liked the way the actress played her as well I can't remember the actress's name I think her name is Sarah but I can't remember her last name but yeah so she's like why the hell are you going through my stuff and she tells him like you have nothing to worry about I have not seen him for years and that was just me like reminiscing on my years when I was in college and everything like you have nothing to worry about well that's true until Brad comes back into her life <laughs> eventually Billy's husband even starts stalking this guy like he shows up at his workplace he tries to figure out what team he goes to um, episode 2 if you know you know but yeah so he gets worried about it he thinks Billy is lying to him she's not telling him the truth and he wants to figure out what the hell is going on the show wants you to 
believe that the story they're there to tell is that love triangle story and is Billy going to choose Cooper? Is she going to go back to Brad? What's gonna happen? Because truth be told, I think Billy and Cooper were having some issues even. So as a viewer, I don't even think she was really happy with him. And that has nothing to do with the fact that I absolutely love the actor who played Brad. But as a viewer, I was rooting for like Billy to figure it out. For a while I was like, oh please go back to Brad. But then I was like, you know what, maybe you need to be alone for a while and figure yourself out. Like you wanted to go back to college, like maybe you should do that. So yeah, throughout the show you get these flashbacks to when Billy and Brad used to date and then she eventually meets up with him again and she's like, you need to stay away from me and my family. Like we broke up like a while ago, like you need to move on. But I honestly don't think she really moved on. So the show gets really addicting. You just want to find out what's going on, what is going to happen. And eventually season two comes out. By the time that season two came out, I had already watched season one two times because that's how much I love this show. I couldn't let it go. Like even one of the main songs from the show, Stop This Flame, I kept on listening to it over and over again. I even watched a few other projects that Adam Dimas, who plays um, Brad, was on. <laughs> so eventually there is a season two. I liked season one a bit more than I liked season two. I felt like season two was a bit more rushed, especially towards the end. They're like, okay, we need to wrap this up. Let's just do this and it's done. I would have liked to go a little bit more in depth, especially because in season one, you go so in depth into these characters' lives, not even just the main character, but also her husband, her best friend, Brad. Like, you don't get to know just about Bill. You get to know the background of all of these characters and like, oh my God, I just fell in love with Brad's character and his, like past and how he grew up. All right, so another show that I wanna talk about is the last show I watched in 2023, which is called As the Crow Flies. I believe that's the English name because it's a Turkish show. I also think it's a Netflix original with two seasons. And this is a TV show all about mind games. So you just wanna binge watch it as well. It's really, really good. In basically in As The Crow Flies, you follow the life of a few characters, one of them being Lale Kiran, who is a TV journalist. She's extremely popular, like everyone knows who this woman is, she's really influential, she has like the most watched news program of the entire country because she says she always swears to tell the truth. She will dig into things, she will investigate everything and she exposes whatever is going on in the country and she always tells the truth. The show also follows the life of this other girl who is a college student. She's studying to become a journalist as well. I'm terrible with characters names so I'm sorry if like I don't get it right but I believe her name is Osley. The show also follows the life of this college student who goes to this conference at her school and basically it's just Lale Kiran speaking to the students who want to become journalists. And then she finds out that there's a position to become an intern at the TV channel that Lale Kiran works for. Basically, they're bringing in a ton of young people and in the end, only one of them gets to stay and that's when the mind games come. So Asli basically starts doing everything she can and like literally anything. This woman is so smart, but at the same time, sometimes I wanted to jump into the TV show and be like, oh my God, girl, what are you doing? She is determined to get that position. So she starts with her mind games and basically she is the reason why everyone else got voted out and they ended up picking her because they had no one else to pick. One thing that I think it's really interesting about this TV show is that when it starts, it makes you believe that Osley is the character that you want to like. She's the likable one and Lale is the one you should be afraid of. Like, that woman is way too powerful. Please don't talk to her, don't even look at her. But as the show goes on, you realize it's quite the opposite. And Lale becomes this 
likable character i think probably one of the most likable characters i've ever watched in a tv show like i was rooting for that woman like my life depended on it and Ostley is actually the one you need to be careful with um so yeah eventually she gets the position she becomes a new intern and i'm not gonna tell you how but eventually she becomes lala's assistant and a few things start going on and as a viewer you're like all right, what does Osley want? Does she want to be an intern? Does she want to be Lali's assistant? Does she want to be a part of her journalist team? Does she want to take Lali's place? You don't know what this girl wants, but you realize there's something more there. So the mind games, they get really addicting and you just want to binge watch the show really. And eventually Lali Kiran, she doesn't, it's not like she finds out about what Osley is up to, but she realizes that Osley is up to something. Lale is also a really smart woman, so basically they're just like playing mind games with each other and it's really, really fun to watch because, you know, Lale is this likable character towards the end of season one, right? That you're rooting for her because she is likable, but at the same time, Osley is so smart that you find yourself like rooting for her a little bit as well but you know you have to watch it and figure out who you want to root for then there's a season two season one ends in a big cliffhanger plot twist sort of thing and so does season two so they better come out with a season three please <laughs> i would love that i'm just going to mention one more tv show since this is the first episode of the series i don't know for how long i should be talking about each Thing. but we'll get there with time I guess but yeah I want to mention one more TV show so this next TV show I think uh, you might be familiar with it at least a lot of people talk about it it's called only murders in the building it's a Disney Plus original I think basically this TV show like First of all, the cast, amazing. I found out about this TV show because Selena Gomez is on it and I've been a fan of her for so, so long. And everyone was saying such good things about this TV show, but I didn't watch it for the longest time because it felt like a type of show that my mom would also enjoy. So I wanted to make sure I could watch it with her. At the beginning of 2023, I eventually convinced her to watch it with me. That's why I only watched like the three seasons this year. I started out by watching the first two seasons like really early on in the year, I think. It was like either in, at the beginning of the year or mid 2023. And then I watched season three like as it was coming out one episode per week. In Only Murders in the Building, you follow this group of three friends who are true crime enjoyer they all live in the same building in new york and they all enjoy the same true crime podcast and eventually in the first episode something happens at that building and that something is that someone is found dead and up until then these three characters had never really talk to each other but one day they're all at the elevator at the same time and they just start doing like some small talk and everything eventually they figure out they all like true crime and they all listen to the same podcast so they're like you know what we should be the ones trying to investigate this murder that happened in our building we can do this like the people at the true crime podcast will listen to do it and it seems easy so why don't we give it a try <laughs> What I love about this TV show is that, first of all, it's a comedy show, so I love murder shows. Oh my God, that sounds so wrong. But I love when there's like a mystery that you as a viewer get to try and figure out by yourself as well. But that's also mixed in with comedy. And this cast is great at that. Like Oliver, oh my God, such a funny character. Oh my god, I, I love it. I love that show so much. I think it's genius. The writing is perfect and the casting is great. Like each person just knows their role so well. It's, it's incredible. But another thing that I really like is that as a viewer, sometimes you figure out stuff about the case that these three friends are working on before they do. So as a viewer, you get to try and find out and figure out what happened. Like, 
who killed this person even without the help of the characters I don't know if I'm making this clear but a lot of the times you figure out stuff before the characters do so you get to try and figure out by yourself and I think that's really really cool season one has that murder after building season two spoiler alert there's also a murder at the same building. The thing that I really like, and I can say that now, but when I watched this show, I definitely did not like that, is the fact that the second murder, so the murder that you're going to solve throughout season two, happens during the last episode of season one. And at the time, I did not like it because I'm really curious and I just wanted season two to come out already. I was like, okay. I'm saying this, but when I watched season one, season two was already out, so I watched it right away. But if I had only been able to watch season one, I would have been like, oh my god, I need season two, please come out. <laughs> in season two, there's another murder in the building, and last episode of season three, guess what? There's another murder. This time, not at the same building, which I get it, because listen, if we're gonna keep on killing the people who live at the same building, like, we're not gonna have a cast for a long time like we can't keep on doing seasons if we murder everyone who lives at this building it's not a murder at the building it is however related to some people in these three main characters lives in season three there's a bit of a new cast and yeah it is related to this new cast i really enjoyed it but i'm still really sad about the way that season 3 ended because like the other seasons season 3 also ends with the murder of one character that is going to be the murder that we're going to try and solve during season 4 that's already been confirmed so I needed to come out like yesterday but I did not like the character that was murdered I mean I love the, that character that's why I did not like that they were murdered such an iconic character they were like a reoccurring character but every time this character would come on one episode i was so happy to see them again why did they have to kill them i believe the person who killed this character was actually trying to kill someone else but got them mixed up so i'm really curious to find out why someone else wanted this other person killed and I can't wait to solve that murder like I did with the last three seasons. Before we move on to another topic, I asked you guys on social media if you could give me like your favorites of the year. For TV shows, one of you said a show called Barry. I looked into it um, yesterday because I had never heard of it actually. It is now on my watch list. I have not watched the trailer yet, but I read like the plot on uh, the TV Time app and it seemed like something that I would really enjoy. It has four seasons. Um, and usually I just watch like shows with one or two seasons, but it seems so much fun. I am really curious to check it out. I'm obsessed with pink blush. Let's move on to a different topic now. Let's talk about movies. Like, we're already talking about TV shows, so might as well. That was a hard one, because I was looking at a list of all the movies I watched throughout 2023. I cannot pick one, for God's sake. <laughs> like everyone and their mother, I went to the movies to watch Barbie. I dressed up in pink and I went to opening night. I really enjoyed the movie. I will be honest, I have watched it. Like I went to the movies to watch it, but I watched it again the other day, like at home. Cause it's such a comfort movie, I think. I really, really enjoyed it. Everyone already knows of Barbie, right? Like everyone talked about it. So I'm gonna be talking about a few different movies. Speaking of going to the theater and watching movies that everyone and their mother was talking about, I went to the opening night of Five Nights at Freddy's. Super, super exciting. I'll be honest, growing up, like I knew about the game, but I've never played it. <laughs> Actually, let me know if I should get like the newest one for Switch because I got a Switch and I feel like 
finally trying a Five Nights at Freddy's game. But I really, really enjoyed watching other people play it. Like, sometimes my friends would be playing it uh, in breaks, like school breaks, and sometimes I would watch because it seemed really interesting. And, you know, at this time, I had never watched a horror movie in my life. Now I love them and watch them all the time. But at this time that I was watching my friends play Five Nights at Freddy's, I never watched a horror movie. So I was a bit scared. That's probably why I preferred watching them play than play it myself. I knew I was about to get jump scared. So that made me scared. But at the same time, it's like I needed to see it. So yeah, I was really excited to go watch Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, I really enjoyed it. I don't know all of the lore. I do know a little bit, but I don't know all of it. But yeah, I enjoyed the movie. Like, I thought it was really fun. And I'm excited to check out a sequel. I think there have been talks about it, so yeah. Another movie that there have been talks about a sequel is Megan. I watched Megan in 2023 and really liked it. It's like a thriller slash horror. It's about a doll who is like a robot, but she looks like a doll, but she looks like an actual person. And this girl's parents, they die and she's now living with her aunt who gives her this doll to play with, but eventually the doll, you know, she's an evil doll. <laughs> The movie sounds so silly, but I really enjoyed it. Another movie that I'm expecting a sequel to is Talk To Me. I watched it at the movies. It's probably one of the most disturbing movies I've watched in a while. It's about a girl who lost her mother and she and her friends, they go to this party uh, and some people at the party have this hand that's like a sculpture of a hand and if you hold that hand and you say talk to me and follow a few other rules as well you can basically talk to people and you see people and you start acting all weird i don't know it's it's weird um but even though it was a bit disturbing for some parts because eventually obviously it has to go wrong there's this guy who's still a minor i believe there was some rule about you can't really play it if you're a minor or the rules like shift a little bit um but he played it and yeah it went wrong and that's the disturbing part because this guy starts doing some really disturbing things and some really disturbing things start happening to him but i really like the way the movie was made it was made by these youtubers do you guys remember the rocka rocka brothers i believe that's what they were called i never watched them but i knew who they were back then and when i saw that they were the ones who like made this movie come to life i was really surprised i was like good on you so yeah i'm excited to check out the sequel we need to talk about rom-coms because i love a good rom-com i finally watched the hating game which is based off a book that i will be honest i haven't read it but yeah the hating game starting lucy hale oh my god i haven't used these paints in a while i'm afraid i'm putting too much so I'm gonna stop there. What was I saying? The Hating Game. The Hating Game starring Lucy Hale. Um, it's basically your typical friend, friends, enemies to lovers. So this girl and this guy, they both work for the same company. Uh, if I remember correctly, it has something to do with like books and publishing. And they work at the same office, like literally their desks are like right next to each other. Uh, and they have this love-hate relationship. Not really, it's more like hate-hate relationship. Basically, they're really competitive and they both want to be the best. And yeah, we all know how that ends in a book or in a movie, right? Like, they eventually hook up. But it's, it's so, so cute. It is a really cute movie. Do you know how people on TikTok, especially book talk, they're like, who is your book boyfriend? Well, I have not read this book, but I could see why people would say this guy is their book boyfriend. He was so cute. And I honestly really liked Lucy Hale's character as well. 
I really enjoyed the movie. I'll be honest, as soon as I finished watching it, I wanted to watch it all over again. I really did. Like, I finished watching and the next day I was like, I want to watch The Hating Game again. That was so cool. Another movie that I really enjoyed was The Devil Wears Prada. I watched it this year as a self-proclaimed fashion girly. I really liked it. But speaking of your guys' favorites, uh, I know some people said the Eris Tour movie. I also watched it. I went to the theater to watch it on opening day. I really enjoyed it. I have yet to go to the Eris Tour. I'm going this May and there will be a vlog, so make sure to subscribe and check it out. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun and it made me like really excited for my show to come. Like I need to go. It's gonna be so much fun. I am super, super excited. And you also said Barbie in Oppenheimer like obviously I have yet to watch the Oppenheimer I haven't watched it I'll be honest by the way like if you all have a TV time account I will leave my TV time link down below I guess so you can like check out every show I've watched and have been watching and movies as well but if you don't and you have a Twitter I also like update there and sometimes even on Instagram because believe me the list of movies and TV shows goes on and on and on and on I could like sit here and talk about it for an hour probably even more if I wanted to talk about every single show and every single movie. Let's talk a little bit about books. I read three books this year. I mean, I read a few more, but from start to finish, I only read three. And I only started at like the summer, I wanna say. I went to this book fair during the summer and I got this book by Colleen Hoover. It's the only Colleen Hoover book that I've read. It's like super, super small. It's called Maybe Not. It pr probably has like a hundred and something pages. And I needed something like that because I needed to get off my reading slump. I've always loved reading, but I hadn't read a book in a long time. And so I saw it, the plot seemed interesting. The book was super, super small. So I was like, you know what? This is gonna help me with this problem. And it did. I read it in like two days, I think, but you, honestly, you can read it in like an entire day, like an afternoon even, it's so, so small. But I enjoyed it. It's your enemies to lovers type of book. Again, uh, so predictable more. I promise not every single book I read has this theme, yet the next one that I'm gonna talk about also has, but I promise not all of them do. Like, my favorite books have nothing to do with this. <laughs> it's about this guy and the girl. By the way, the book is from the guy's point of view, which was something different, something that I haven't, like, experienced a lot. I can only think of another book that I've read that was from the guy's point of view instead of the girl. So that was, like, different. That was fun. And yeah, it's about this guy who lives with his friends at this shared apartment. And one day, one of his friends comes home with this girl and he's like, she's gonna be living here we need to help her out she's going through some stuff and she's gonna stay here and the main character of the book is like hold up we don't know anything about this girl like who is she number one number two what's her deal and number three why are you letting a total stranger like stay with us what's going on what the hell are you doing so yeah they don't like hit it off right away they're not friends and they don't talk for a bit but and when they do they don't like each other at all I'll be honest, I can't remember exactly what happens for them to start like being more friendly towards each other, but you know how this goes, like they eventually end up staying together. The end. <laughs> I also read two other books, both by Estelle Maskame. I can't pronounce her last name, which makes me really sad because I think she's my favorite author, or at least like recently I've been loving her books so much. I read the first two books from the Mila trilogy. I am currently reading the third one. Um, but yeah, in 2023, I read the first two. Speaking of Mila, here is my Mila. <laughs> so it's basically about this girl who lives in California and her dad is like a really big movie star and he's about to release one of his newest movies. 
but uh, his PR team doesn't think like Mila's reputation is good for her dad's image. So basically for the summer they sent her off to Texas? I can't remember exactly where they sent her off to, but this family ranch that they have. So she won't do anything that can be bad for her dad's image. And she has no access to social media, she can't talk to her friends back home and she hasn't been to this ranch and this place in a really long time. So she's really scared that her friends that she used to have, because for the first few school years she still lived there, she's really scared that, they're, that her old friends won't like even remember her or won't want to be friends with her but eventually they do and they're like we're going to this party this was a really big fast forward they're like we're going to this party tonight do you want to come and she goes and there's this guy his name is Blake and he's actually the cousin of one of her friends they start off as enemies like the other movie I was just talking about and the other book but they they're not friends at first, but I wouldn't say this book is like the enemies to lovers type of book because they don't stay as enemies for that long, honestly. When I was reading, I was like, okay, here I go, another enemies to lovers book. But that wasn't really the case. Like, they eventually fixed it. Like, her friend goes up to her cousin and is like, you need to apologize and all of that and he does and eventually they find out they have a lot in common so they become friends and then y'all know what happens next because there's free books for a reason so those were my books of 2023 i had recently just read icebreaker by hannah grace loved it i think i'm going to read uh, wildfire next because i really like her writing style and I literally bought Icebreaker and Wildfire both in the same day. <laughs> Need to set my setting spray. Isn't that hilarious? The setting spray is so wet. I don't like it. I mean, I love the setting spray, but God. I wanna move on to music and let's start by sharing my spotify wrapped top artists so in order they were quirps sabrina carpenter machine gun kelly nessa barrett and savage gas so i listened to a lot of sabrina this year i say as if i haven't listened to a lot of sabrina every year oh i also forgot about something white liner so yeah, I listen to a lot of Sabrina because I got to see her in person, finally. I had been a fan of her for, at the time I got tickets, for 8 years. As I'm filming this video, for 9 years. And I'd never seen her, she doesn't come to Europe that often and she announced a, an European tour. She did not come here, uh, which like I was not surprised by that. I did not think she would be coming here. But I traveled somewhere and I saw her. It was such an amazing experience. One of my two favorite concerts of the year. I went to like six, I think. And that was definitely one of my two favorites. I listened to her album, Emails I Can Send, a lot. It's my favorite Sabrina album and it's probably one of my favorite albums like ever <laughs> I also listened to a little bit of Machine Gun Kelly in 2023 because I also saw him during the summer for the first time it was his first time here I loved it it was my other favorite show of the year it was super fun it was at the festival I was really lucky to get front row so when you know when in every show he comes down and he like you know, he sings a few of the songs like right next to the people. Was lucky enough that he did that. It was really, really fun. Like, I think it was one of the most fun shows I've ever been to. Like, the energy was insane. I honestly was like, not nervous, but I didn't know like if he had a big fan base here or how the people would react to him 
coming here for a show but it was really really nice and I loved the experience and I'm really happy that I finally got to see him play live we need to talk about Corpse's releases in 2023 as well because hello there's not a single time that Corpse puts out the song and I'm like mm, I don't like it like all his songs are great all his songs are so different from the last thing he has released like they all sound so different I love it and that's what makes it hard because I can't pick a favorite it depends on the day I usually go for Live Waster because that one really like I was like what when I first listened to it so that's usually my go-to when someone asks me for his, for my favorite but it's honestly really hard especially with the ones he released in 2023 like under the weather oh my god i was not expecting that then he released code mistake with bring me the horizon like hello that was insane i really enjoyed that one and then this then which was completely different a bit more deftone vibes loved it i loved every single one period i never do bottom lashes like mascara but I'm feeling like it so why not let's also talk about nessa barrett i listen to her a lot especially like the beginning of the year and in the summer girl that's basically the whole year um anyways i loved american jesus and the music video too i love nessa's music videos um and yeah i really enjoyed die first as well but American Jesus, I think that was like my song, my Nessa song of the year. All right, I need to start doing this bottom lashes mascara because that looks cute. Still want a bit more sparkle. I'm gonna use this. This is new, but you know what? Let's try it just here on the inner corners. And I've talked about every single artist on my Spotify wrap except for one. So let's talk about Savage Gas. He released a um, collaboration album with Kamara. Obsessed. Till this day, I can't pick a favorite song. Girl, pick a struggle. Ooh, this is a pretty shadow. Like just on the inner corners, but like imagine the whole eye. Gorge. But yeah, Savage Gas. And Kamara released their collaboration album. Loved it. Can't pick a favorite song. And they were really kind. I wanted to use one of their songs from my Halloween makeup tutorial I posted on YouTube. And wasn't sure it was copyright free. I was pretty sure it was, but I wanted to check. So I DM'd them and they said it was all good. They did a little Europe tour. I was not able to go they didn't play here and i was honestly like fighting the urge to go somewhere else to see them especially because my friend alex was seeing them in another place um and i wanted to meet her with her as well but i was already traveling for sabrina so not this time but hopefully next time but my friend alex she surprised me and i did not know she was doing this she got gasp to write me a note and like a little drawing as well and she then sent me a picture and said like one day when we meet up because we've been trying to plan a meet up for the longest time ever she said one day when we meet up in person she's going to give it to me and i'll try to remember to put a picture somewhere but it was really cute i really enjoyed it thank you alex there's one more thing i can think of regarding music which is Dua Lipa's comeback, hello, with Houdini. I am like the most excited ever. Like I cannot wait for her new era, her new album that's supposed to come out this year. And I also can't do my lip liner while talking. I really liked it, as you all know. I posted a reaction video to it. Uh, and I sounded like a five-year-old kid who was excited to go to the candy shop So yeah, I think that was like one of my favorite songs But honestly, it's really hard to keep up with like which song came out when Anyways, regarding music, I got a few of your 
like favorites. Someone said Travis Scott till further notice. I don't think I've listened to that, or if I have, at least I can't remember. Tate McRae's newest album, Think Later. I can't believe I'm not seeing Tate. She's coming here in May. Yeah, in May, but I, I can't go. I watched her show. She did an online show during quarantine in which you would get a ticket, but you would basically watch a live stream. It was so much fun and I loved her music back then so much, like her first few songs. But like, I'm sad I can't go. Hopefully she comes back another time. Uh, I also got Greedy by Tate, Dua Lipa Houdini, Taste. Someone said the Post Malone concert. I've never seen Post Malone in concert, but one of the times in which he's been here, they played the show like live on TV as well and I watched some of it and I really liked it and I think he has great music and he seems like a really nice person I have watched him play uh, games on Twitch for a little bit and I've seen him on he's been on a Call Her Daddy like podcast right I'm pretty sure I've seen that I can't remember exactly what I did last time for my cold girl makeup so I'm gonna use something I got for Christmas which is this thing right here and we're gonna try it out um, but yeah I wanted also to talk about fashion trends that just looks like snake bites wait a second I'm trying to focus it in the middle of the lip like the center Oh, that's cute like Korean makeup style cute I already did a video talking about just like my favorite makeup products of the year but I wanted to talk a little bit about fashion ones as well I loved that I'm finally confident to wear a mini skirt because I would always see people wear them and I was like, you know what, I'm really tall people are going to judge but I finally got a few and by a few I mean a lot and I love the mini skirt trend super super cute and I got a ton of them, I need to stop every time I see a new one I'm like, oh my god that is gorgeous, I need but then I need to remember that I need to slow down with the mini skirts but they're really cute and they were one of my favorite fashion trends another thing the bows you can tell if you can see i'm wearing one right now i have a lot different colors different sizes different types of materials my favorite ones are the really big ones that are like satin kind of like this one i think i have all the colors i wanted i'm just looking for one which is the red I really want a red one, but I'm looking for the perfect red one. I have yet to find it, but I really liked it. What else did I like? I like that there was like a little bit more grungy style. I think that was probably a little bit more with makeup, but a little bit with fashion as well. And the denim, like so much denim this year. Love, love, love. But also love to find my lip gloss. Here it is. This look is so sparkly already. I'm going overboard, but. I never wear this lipstick anymore because it's really sparkly but it might just be perfect for this look whoa that's pretty regarding fashion trends one of you said uh, you really enjoyed the Y2K early 2000s fashion in general but in a more elevated way I agree like I really liked the 90s fashion and when I saw things were like okay we're bringing white 2k back 2000s a little bit of the 2010s a little bit of tumblr I was like all right like let's see how this goes because I like the type of fashion but I'm afraid we're going to mess it up and like destroy it completely but I really liked it and the approach everyone like took of it it was 
really really cool so i definitely really enjoyed that i also got different genres of fashion that people made their own also the rise of alia core more black girls and women felt comfortable dressing alt yes another thing with like dressing alt super super fun i love how it's a bit more common not that it's never been a thing but you know how you would go out in like a little bit of a more alt outfit and people would look and judge that still happens but not as much i guess and the alia core just makes me think of like alia core was 2023 i feel like i've been seeing her on my feed for so long i can't even like comprehend how did that happen in 2023 but that's right what i love the most about alia core is that it's not necessarily the fashion itself not I, that i don't like the way she dresses up i actually really like it but what i like the most is that she just brings out like that confident girl energy and everything's so colorful and it's so her and she's expressing herself and it's really really cool and she also like posts her little video being like you should do it too and encouraging other people to express themselves and to be confident so i really like that i think that's everything this was stressful they talk about tv shows movies books music and fashion i think that's all i think i've definitely missed something when it comes to like tv shows and movies because there were so many and it's hard to pick a favorite and I also wanted to talk about music a little bit more probably but I honestly can't think of what came out in 2023 it's hard to keep track those were some of my favorites and your favorites thank you so much to everyone who submitted their answers I appreciate it this is my approach to the cool girl makeup trend I think it's cute I wore this for school a few weeks ago and I liked it so I thought I would start off this series with this type of look it's simple i think it's easy to do everyone online is doing it it makes it like seem difficult because everyone looks stunning but it's actually like quite simple to achieve and it's really pretty and it's very wearable i think but yeah i hope you enjoyed episode number one you can submit other topics for future episodes if you'd like and you also can submit like makeup looks you'd like me to do during the episodes that would help a lot because I've been trying to figure out ideas for looks. I have a few, but sometimes I don't know whether I should do them for TikTok or for YouTube. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you could like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. I do a lot of makeup and fashion content and like concert vlogs and all of that. So feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!